Hi. This are tips. Um, hopefully, it helps someone who is new to the um, work of the lab, especially in vitro, and find it very frustrating to have to repeat the experiments every day. Um, so hopefully this video will help. Uh, so as I just said, it's this video for the novices. So if you are experts in the lab, you may not find um, these tips very helpful because you may already know most of them. Um, these are my lab secrets. Each one cost me weeks and weeks of free mix. So this is a gift for everyone who is doing a research uh, as a newbie. Um, my research project as an idea to know what I'm talking about was about going a cell line and adding a drug. Simply. Okay. So here is my tips to work um, efficiently in the lab. The first tip is as we all know, the early bird gets the worm, right? We know this. So I used to go to the lab early before anyone. Um, so all equipments available to use. Most of us, when we work in a lab, we have other people working with us on different projects. So when we go to the lab, if this is like cell culture lab or biochemistry lab, genetic lab whatever we have limited number of equipment and we have many people need um, this equipment so uh, when I I used to go early I used to go from 7 to 9 before anyone arrives uh, at the lab so I can use a centrifuge <laughs> I don't need to uh, wait in line uh, for someone to finish I can use um, the laminal hood um, actually, I'm a kind of person who, who likes to work in quiet atmosphere. So, especially especially for the lab, you have to focus and concentrate, and any um, error in calculation can cost you to repeat the experiment. So, I used to go early at seven in the morning and work in a quiet environment I have all the equipment ready I don't need to wait so this is one of, of my tips and the other um, time I used to work in was the lunch break it was at the lunch break so I used to work from 7 to 9 and when my colleagues come I leave the lab for them and then go do um, like calculation or research or in the internet whatever and then come back between 12 to uh, to 1. Sometimes I, I had to work while my colleagues in the lab because I needed some help or some mentoring. But if I know what I'm doing, it's better to work while, as I said, the equipments are available. Next step, plan, plan, plan. Have a written protocol with the steps. I used to fix it with a magic tape near the workplace. I used to research every single um, step in my protocol and I don't just uh, like to print a video protocol from the internet or from the company I used to write my own protocol because sometimes there are I think most most of, uh, of us do this right most of us write their own protocols um, I saw many many PIs and many researchers they have their own um, handwritten protocols because you get to write things like things you don't understand or notes to yourself or like uh, reminders that um, um, you need help at this point or you need to modify the protocol so I had a written protocol and I used to fix it next to my workplace I used tape to fix the protocol and mark each and every step I finish this this helped me not to like asking myself where I'm where I am now like which step am I in okay so that's my tip just my tip okay third tip is never put all eggs in one basket okay 
for me I learned it I learned it this one the hard way I think everyone working in the lab learned this the hard way what uh, this means is that like for example never put or flasks in one incubator never use um, new material on oil cells like trypsin, cell media, never use any new techniques on oil cells um, for example we have cells uh, for example one or two flasks of cells or, or dishes of cells so uh, never use all of cells like never use um, new material like new um, prepared medium or um, or new uh, diluted trypsin because um, sometimes it happened to me um, like when you add uh, the medium for example uh, it has something wrong so like, if it has something wrong with it all the cells gonna die or if I use too strong trypsin high um, high concentration of trypsin if I use it to all the cells I have all the cells gonna die so I always take like um, one flask of cells and try any new material on it even for the techniques if I'm doing technique for um, the first time I don't use it on all the cells I have because I'm not sure uh, I can survive this technique so don't put your eggs uh, all your eggs in one basket for example we had incubator and one day the CO2 level of the incubator was very high so my cells died that's why I learned to put half of my cells in one incubator and the other half on, uh, in another incubator just in case if something happened to this incubator I still have backup that's tip number three tip number four check days before that you have all materials and equipment for the experiment day everything flask by bit even the clock and marker this is very important very important sometimes when I went to the lab to work Oh my god, I need small flask, but all I have is big flask. Oh my god, I don't have um, um, what saline, for example. Um, even the clock, I need to calculate um, how much time I'm gonna wait for the trypsin um, on the cells. So, okay, if I don't have clock, I have to check do I have a computer I can open the computer to use the clock um, do I have the marker to mark the flask I have to write my name even the marker do I need to use a specific marker which can be um, washed while I'm um, wiping with alcohol or something so I do this even days days before the experiment day so I I do this like hopefully not to have so many surprises um, in, in, in on my experiment lab itself check days before that you know how to operate the machines okay I think the bottom line is experiment day is to do the experiment it's not the day to just um, search uh, where is the material or um, it's not the day you um, you search how can I use this centrifuge it looks weird it's unlike the centrifuge in my other lab no it's not the perfect time to do this on experiment day when when I'm ready to do my real experiment like adding the drug and calculating three days or um, uh, uh, like doing RNA extraction or, or doing wasting blood it's not the perfect time to search these things on the experiment day we have to do it like days before the experiment day even for me even if the, if the machine is so simple like 
we think that everyone knows how to use the uh, what's the, what is the easy word centrifuge for example but sometimes okay this centrifuge set to seconds how to set to minutes for example so even the small things we have to prepare in advance tip number six plan for plan P, uh, B, uh, in case you have someone else helping you and they didn't show up at the day of experiment. This happened to me and it costed me a lot, a lot of time because I was depending, many times I was depending on um, a technician or other uh, professor or other doctor or other researcher to help me. So I put the drug and then waited like three days, seven days, whatever, and then no one show up at the day of experiment maybe someone sick maybe someone has uh, to substitute someone in a lecture so I have to have plan B what if this person didn't come can I do the experiment myself can I operate the machine is there any uh, is there anyone uh, else who can help I think I think this is the most important one Tip number seven, try to have a good sleep and relax if possible. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why it affected me like so hard. Whenever I go to the lab sleepy, I don't do the experiment well. Um, for me, I needed like so much focus and so much concentration to do well in the lab. So. Like if if I go into the lab with a bad mood or stressed or have problems with my paycheck or <laughs> a room like a roommate or a renter or something, I don't go. Um, I don't do the experiment this day because I don't know why it happened to me so many times when I go to the lab, like nervous or stressed. Um, the work never, never, never goes through. Tip number eight, put things to the best frame possible. And this is not my tip. This is the tip of my friend Gary Stennett. He was postdoc um, at the same lab I was working. Um, if you hesitate to use a salt or trash trash, if you hesitate to uh, do a viability test or not, do it. Um, Gary, my friend, advised me to put things to the best frame possible in research. Um, we ask this kind of questions all the time. Um, we have two opinions. Some people in the lab told me, okay, the cells are fine, they look healthy and happy. And the other, they tell, um, I know they are like apart from each other, they don't look like that healthy. Um, okay, trash. What you gonna do? If someone says you don't need to do viability um, tests at the beginning of the experiment, and some say you have to do it, to do or not to do. Gary advised me this, and I found it. Um, like relieving <laughs> because when I do um, the best frame possible at least I don't regret not doing it but um, if I like do the simple way or the easiest way or the easiest uh, option I may say to myself oh my god it's my fault I didn't do this I didn't do my best um, at least if you put the things to the best uh, frame possible, um, you will not, you will not regret not doing this. For me, it was like, okay, relaxing. It's fine. It's not my fault. I did my best. But we have to balance between perfection and convenience. We're gonna put the um, things to the best frame possible, but to limit. Uh, we gonna repeat the experiments until um, we are comfortable that our results are 
are reproducible and correct but to limits um, still we have a time still um, we limited by um, like uh, financial issues and like we can't like just waste material all the time so you have to balance between doing the experiment so many times and what you have how much time do you have and how much um, material do you have I hope so the answer to this one is so simple but it all depends on your judgment in the lab no one can tell you exactly if you're gonna stop at this point or just keep um, redoing redoing the experiment or the step of experiment we need to deal with daily frustrations as scientists accept it if we just accept this fact we're gonna handle it but if we deny it or um, feel angry about it I don't think we're gonna find a way um, we need to deal with the daily frustration as scientists yes yes it's a fact it's fact we are scientists we are researchers <laughs> so we search and then research and then research I think that's why they would the re <laughs> it's all about repetition it's our job we're not doing um, a routine work and expecting uh, everything to have the same results in science one plus one not equal to every time you can do the same experiment and you gotta find <clears throat> I mean you expect something and then you find something different um, you can prepare for the experiment and then you you find something different um, it's it's our job it's it's a reality and we have to deal with it deal with the daily frustration sometimes we can vent with colleagues in the lab and when we hear that it's normal and everyone have failures with their experiments everyone repeats the experiments maybe we feel it's okay it's not only me um, sometimes we have to um, look at other point another point of view about the experiment like um, reading more digging more in the literature saying what other people saying um, sometimes we just need to contact the company and ask for help uh, but it's a fact it's a fact and it's part of our job and we have to deal with it not to get um, stuck not to get stuck okay I'm not I'm not continuing this experiment oh, it's part of our job to have failure and then repeats that's normal yeah and this step also for my uh, friend Gary doing a research is like opening a mystery door it's related to the previous step when we go to uh, the lab and doing experiments and the previous um, like article or literature you read saying okay you're gonna put a plus b and you're gonna find c so you're going to the lab and expecting to seeing c if we going to the lab and expecting to see a plus b equal c equal c so why we are doing the research if we are just replicating the work of other people so why we are here research is about um, discovering new discoveries is about um, accidents sometimes accidents happen in the lab and you figure out that uh, the, this thing can be modification for the protocol and it can give a good result uh, and it happened to me a lot it's just by accident I figure out some things and um, it leads it led it to um, sorry it led to um, better results so it's it's um, 
it's the nature of research it's a mystery y you expect what you're gonna find but don't expect to find why you expect it you know what i'm saying it's like you expecting to find something similar to the literature but it doesn't um, happen all the time last tip and it just means follow your intuition for me i just find um following my intuition was my was my best tip because you you have a feeling like gut feeling shall i repeat or i just take this result um shall i use this drug or use the other drug um shall i apply for this project or not apply for this project you're gonna search you're gonna ask colleagues uh, you're gonna do your homework but still there is something inside you tells you the right way this were my tips to work um, in the lab if you I hope I hope um, it helps someone if you have uh, any tips you can comment and they have question you can post it and please subscribe thank you